Diligent and dedicated, Sandiwe Magona bounced back into life. Studying part-time while working, she graduated from UNISA and was then awarded a scholarship to Columbia University in New York. While I was at Columbia, I had done some part-time part work for the United Nations in the anti-apathy radio programs and they had advertised the job full-time and I had applied and been told I was the top candidate. I had started working in a factory here in Cape Town when the job came through and I scooped up my kids and left. It was an amazing experience. The first thing for me was just being treated like everybody else. It was a huge thing that my salary had nothing to do with my gender or my, the color of my skin. It was like, huh? It was a fantastic opportunity for all of us and for the kids, because the kids were brought up with this saying from me that everything I'm doing, I'm doing for all of us. This is in New York, 2000, and this is Cindy Wee's daughter, Tembeka, and this is Toko and Cindy Wee. What was it like for you when you went to the United States? You saw her, you saw the kids. I think this is a... This now is when Cindy Wee took me to the towers. Yeah, it was a very cold night. It was so exciting and I couldn't believe myself when we got there. Yeah. So what I liked about her is that she didn't just cower when she, her husband left her. There's a saying she used to say, uh, even if my husband has left me, his friends, when they see me, they must say, oh, what a fool to leave such a wonderful woman like that. Did you ever find out the reason why he left? One day it just occurred to me out of sheer curiosity to go and look at his file. That's when I discovered he had been endorsed out of the area. When he went to the pass office to have an extension to, to remain in Cape Town, the stamp that was put in his pass was leave within 72 hours or whatever. Leave and don't come back. Did you forgive him? Why wouldn't I? Of course I forgave him. To understand the burden of the past is something that most people have no idea, even us who carried the past. Sometimes the unsavory parts of a life, the real challenges of a life is where the, the lesson is. And if you leave it out and sanitize your life, you are missing a point. You know, being in New York, the most, being you know, out of South Africa, let me put it that way, here, just what is called, what is your made me I am woman expand. Flesh. I doubt that if I had not left South Africa, I would ever have written. I doubt it. How did it feel to write your first book? Indescribable. <laughs> really indescribable. Because I was doing something I was very tentative about, but I, I, I wanted to do it. So I was challenging myself to do something I was scared to do. This is my study. I'll read you my coming out poem because uh, it's the first one I ever read, read publicly. Fear of change. April 1994, with bated breath, we wait. At last, we join the rest of progressive humanity. Uhuru, inkululeko, kikikikikikiki. She looks at life and, and makes people understand the intricacies of life. And perhaps there's, you know, you look at, at, at a problem and beyond that problem, there's a solution. The world has a memory swifter than a blink. Give it a decade or two. If that, then fast and full will questions flow. Why are they not making it? What's holding them back now? After all, apartheid is gone. My life is an accident of apartheid. It's a life that shouldn't have ended up like this. Which is why I know I'm no better than the people I have left behind. 
When you see a beggar, don't be busy feeling sorry for that person. Feel sorry for yourself. Because we believe every child is born with their hands tightly fisted like that. Because that is where God, the ancestors, the universe, whatever higher being you believe in, puts the gifts the child comes bearing to the world. My gift is writing words. And when you see that big lady, imagine the wealth you have lost. Don't feel sorry for her. Feel sorry for what you have lost. Sandiwe's passions live on through her writing and through the work of actors like Tembi Charlie Jones, who's created a theatre piece adapted from Sandiwe's book, Mother to Mother. It was a day much the same as any other day. Standing at the kitchen door, facing the backyard where the boys sleep in the tin shack. You know these one size fits all houses of Kukuleto. Don't expand as the children come. So I shout out to them. Hey Nina, Vugani, wake up! You'll be late for school. I am both elated and humbled at one and the same time. I'm elated that this work has come to be at this point in its journey. I am humbled that even I can be used as a vehicle to educate, to shed light. Whatever they removed from him at circumcision, it certainly wasn't laziness. always gets me. You wrote it. Yeah, but it's your words. So with all of this, what are you left with about life? I am humbled by the benevolence, really, of the universe, that someone such as I am could end up someone such as I am. Life is a wonder, a real wonder. We don't know the journey even as we walk it. And at any given moment in one's life, just like that, things can turn around. When I look at my own leap of faith, I could not have imagined where my turning away from that bridge would lead me. I know and I knew then I was choosing life and not death. But in my wildest dreams, in my wildest dreams, I could not have envisaged the life that awaited me. God, you know my heart. God, you know my heart. You know I'm a mother with a mother's heart. The shame weighs heavy on my shoulders the cup you gave me to be to swallow god you know my heart